Hello everybody! Today I'm going to show you guys how to easily make a platformer game in Unity. A platformer game is a game where you need to go from the beginning of the level to the end, avoiding obstacles, enemies and more. You can think of games like Mario, Celeste or Hollow Knight. In the first episode of this multiple part series, I will be creating the player controls. During the series I will be making all sorts of things that are important in a platformer game, like wall jumping, different types of enemies and more. Now let's get started. I have this very simple scene set up with a player character, a background and a platform to stand on. The player has an idle animation, a 2D capsule collider and a rigid body 2D with its rotation frozen. I will leave a download link to all of the sprites I used in this video in the description. Now let's create this new c -sharp script called player controller. Attach it to the player game object and open it up. In this code we first create a private rigid body 2D variable called rb. We then assign it in the start function. The start function is called only once, right when the game is loaded. We will be using the rb variable to move the player left and right and also to do the jump. Here we first create two new variables, both being floats. Float is a number that can have decibel uh, numbers behind it, while an integer is a number that is always a whole number. We first make the speed variable and put serialized field behind it. This is so we can edit it in the inspector without having to make it public. Next we create the move input float, which will be a number between minus 1 and 1, depending on which buttons the player is pressing. Next we assign the move input variable to the horizontal input axes, which are the A and D buttons, as well as the left and right arrow keys, and the uh, left stick of the joystick. Finally, we give our rigid body a velocity on the X axis, but not on the Y axis, because that is going to be our jump. We do all of this inside of our fixed update function. Fixed update is the same as the regular update function, except it's called 20 times per second instead of every frame. Whenever you're using physics in your code, like with rigid bodies, you should use fixed update instead of regular update. We multiply our speed with time.fix.time to make it frame rate independent. This means that people with a faster computer won't have an advantage over people with a slower computer. Now let's go back into Unity. Let's set the speed variable to something like 125. Start the game and test it out. You can see that we can walk to the left and right, however we're not able to jump yet, so let's fix that. To make the jumping system we first need to create a couple of variables. The isGrounded variable is of type bool. A bool is a variable that can either be true or false. This variable will be used to check if the player is on the ground, if they are then we will set isGrounded equal to true. The feedpost variable is a transform variable. This will be an object that we will be using to do our ground check. The check radius float will be the radius in which we will check if the player is standing on the ground. Finally, the ground layer is a layer mask variable that we will be using to determine which objects are ground and which are not. Now let's add these checks and make the player jump. First we create another variable called jump force, which is simply a force to determine how high we jump. Then we check if the player is on the ground using the overlap circle function. Then we check if the player is grounded and if they press the space button. If everything is true, then a jump function is called, in which we make the player jump by using vector 2 up multiplied by jump force. Now let's go back into Unity. Create a new empty game object as a child of your player object and call this feet. Place it somewhere near the bottom or the feet of your player. Now drag and drop the feet object into the feet pose variable. Set the check radius to something small, like 0.2, and the jump force to something like 8. You can obviously change these, as well as your speed, uh, to fit your game. Now let's go to the right of the inspector and press layer. Create a new layer and give it a name, something like ground. Now you need to assign this layer to any game object that you want the player to be able to jump from. For me that will be the ground objects. The last thing to do before we can test the jumping out is to go back to our player object and assign the ground layer to our ground layer variable. Now let's start the game and test everything out. To get a bit more of a snappier jump, I will increase the jump force to 12 and set the player's gravity to 4. This way the player falls down a lot quicker. Now that everything is working, I'll add the ability for the player to jump higher when they hold the spacebar for a longer time. 
The jump time counter variable will keep track on how long we have left to jump. The jump time variable is how long we have left, but it's not variable. Meaning that if we set this to something like 0.5, then we have 0.5 seconds to jump. The is jumping variable is a bool that will simply check if we're jumping. In the original if statement, where we check if we need to jump, we'll also start the jumping sequence with the new variable. In the second if statement, we check if the player is holding down jump, in which case they will be able to jump higher. Let's go back into Unity and set jump time to something like 0.25 and let's test it out. A final thing I want to add in this video is for the player to flip when they start moving in the other direction. This is very simple to do. Let's go back to our script and add this. Here we simply check if the player is moving left or right and rotate the player object in that direction. That was it. I hope you find this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. I will be making more 2D platformers uh, tutorials in the near future. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one.